All right. Okay, to skin out the head of the bird, and what we want to do is invert it. On a quail or a pheasant, um, maybe a crow, we can invert it because the head is not larger than the neck opening. If you're mounting a duck, then you're going to want, you're going to have to use a different method and create an incision um, below or on the head of the duck, and we'll show you that later. So, using a quail, we just invert, I've got the neck, and we just invert the hide down as far as we can with, it'll pull fairly loosely down, but be careful as you go. You may not need to do any actual skinning with, until you get down to the skull. Now we're down to the back of the skull. That's the that's the dorsal side of the skull, top of the skull. This is the ventral side of the skull. And you can definitely, it's pretty easy to see the hide and then the muscle connective tissue and bone. And as you go, as, as it pulls over the head, what you're going to notice is at one point it's a straight circle around. And then as you get further down, all of a sudden the hide hangs up and it goes to a point. And so right here, right here the hide is stuck, coming all the way up to a point. It goes back in a V away from the place where it's attached to the ear canal. The only way to go further at this point is to make an incision through the hide at that point. So we break our rule of not cutting on the hide, always kind of cutting behind it and staying away from the leading edge. And we cut right over the hide at this point where you can see it. And it makes a hole in the hide, but that hole is in the ear canal. And so it's a hole that we need, that we want to create, as opposed to putting holes in the hide at random places. So once we do that and we get it, then we take a, we should use a sharp scalpel and we should stay behind the leading edge of the skin, behind that hole that was created by the ear canal where it goes into the ear. And so then as soon as you move that up very far, you see dark coloration of the eye socket where the eyeball is. So we flip this over to the other side and again you can see where the hide is hung up going back to a point and at the very top of that point we just cut gently with our scalpel and that creates a hole again, a hole that we want to have, we need to have if we're going to skin down over the rest of the skull all the way to the beak. And we stay behind that hole and behind the leading edge. The next thing, like I said, that you see is you begin to see the eyeball. And the eyeball is dark in color. Um, and so we want to skin over the eye and expose the eyelid, but we don't want to make any holes around the eyelid. Um, difficult to repair and difficult to have the bird look natural when it's mounted. So we stay, again, well behind the leading edge of the hide. And you need a sharp scalpel, cut carefully with the tip of the scalpel. And when you can see the center of the eyeball, you actually want to cut right on it. And what that's going to do is release the hide so that you can, the eyelid will actually be exposed and you'll be able to see the hole that is the eyelid. And I'll show you that here. Right here you can see the, the center of the eyeball and then you can definitely see where the eyelid is. And as we cut, we want to make sure we stay behind that eyelid with our incisions, as we skin over this, we want to stay behind that eyelid so that we don't make any holes in it. This quail is pretty small, so we have to be pretty gentle with our cutting. We pull that forward, we want to proceed all the way to the beak. And so staying behind that eyelid and cutting just with the, pulling on it and cutting just with the tip of our scalpel blade, we can get that to release down to the beak. And so that side is just barely past the eye, moving down towards the beak. We'll go to the other side. The other side, again, you see a, a dark purple or black sphere. Stay on the back part of that as you make your incisions. Kind of pull the hide forward and then using the tip of the scalpel. Once you can see the center of the eyeball, then go ahead and cut gently just on the back side of the center of the eyeball so that again you can release the what it does is it releases the eyelid and without making any cuts into the eyelid itself you can see that round hole 
and we stay behind it with our cutting until the hide releases down to the bill or the beak. And once we're down to the beak, then we've gone far enough with our skinning. Get the hide to release right next to the beak. And at that point, we've got it skinned out all the way. The next thing that we'll want to do is we need to remove any flesh, um, remove the tongue. The tongue can be removed by making an incision on the ventral side, the underneath side of the, hot, the head, right along the jawbone on both sides, and then sliding your scalpel underneath. And with the incision made there and an incision made there, and your scalpel carefully slid in underneath, you can hold the hide and just carefully pull the tongue right out. And so the tongue now and the muscles attaching to it are pulled back. At that point, we want to get rid of the neck entirely, and so we'll just snip the neck off right even with the back of the skull.